Let's work on question 15 from chapter 8. So this question says, sales personnel for Skillings distributors submit weekly reports listing the customer contacts made during the week. A sample of 65 weekly reports showed a sample mean of 19.5 customer contacts per week. The sample standard deviation was 5.2. We need to provide 90% and 95% confidence intervals for the population mean number of weekly customer contacts for the sales personnel. So before we move on to that, let's just go through and figure out what we know. We know that our sample size is 65. We know that our sample mean is 19.5. And we know that S, our sample standard deviation, is 5.2. Now we can talk about confidence intervals. And so if you look on your formula sheet, you'll notice that there's two different formulas for the confidence interval for mean. The difference is one uses a z-score and the other one uses a t-score. What we can do is try to prove that we can use z-scores, prove that it's normally distributed. Uh, so we have those three proofs, right? Um, and with our information that we have, we notice that none of those proofs work out in this case. Our n isn't greater than 100. Um, sigma is not given, and we were not told that it was normally distributed and bell-shaped. So none of those work out, meaning we will have to use a t-score. So we'll use that formula on the screen now, and we also notice that we will need an alpha. Our alpha in this case is 0.1. We find that by taking 1 minus our confidence level. So 1 minus 0.9 gets us 0.1. In our formula, we need alpha divided by 2. So we'll write that one down as well as alpha divided by 2 equals 0.05. So we can now plug in what we know into our formula. We know our x bar, we know our s, and we know our n. We don't know this t-score yet, though. We're going to need to look in a chart to find that. So in order to find that, we need something called degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom here are 64. You find your degrees of freedom by just taking your sample size minus 1. So our sample size was 65. Subtract 1 from that and our degrees of freedom are 64. So now you can look in your t-score chart and you look at your degrees of freedom of 64 and then up along the top you'll see something called the area in the upper tail. Well the area in the upper tail is that 0.05, um, that alpha divided by 2 that we have in this problem. So we find our t-score with the degrees of freedom of 64 and an area in the upper tail of 0.05 and that t-score will end up as 1.669. So we can multiply that t-score by our standard error and find our margin of error to be 1.076. So then we do 19.5 plus and minus our margin of error giving us a confidence interval of 18.424 to 20.576. So we're 90% confident that our sales personnel made contact with 18.4 up to 20.576 customers per week. If we now want to provide a 95% confidence interval, the only thing that's changing here is our alpha. So alpha is now at 
meaning alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.025. So then we can start plugging into our, uh, into our confidence interval formula again. So our x bar is still 19.5, our s is still 5.2, and our n is still 65. But now we need to find this t-score again. So our degrees of freedom are still 64. We found that by taking n minus 1. But now the area in the upper tail is 0 0.025. So the t-score that corresponds with that is 1.998. So if we take that t-score that we found, multiply it by our standard error, we'll get a margin of error of 1.289. So we take this 19.5 and we add and subtract our margin of error, giving us a confidence interval of 18.211 to 